Today's tutorial is going to be a short one where we learn how to create this particular sci-fi tunnel. It's going to use basic geometry nodes and is mostly done using shader editor techniques. With that, let's begin the tutorial. In our default scene, let's go ahead and bring our cursor to the junction of these two windows, click and drag to create a new window and then change this from the 3D viewport to the geometry node editor. Then we'll press this plus button to create a new geometry node tree, after which we can select the group input and tap X to delete it. Now we essentially want three concentric rings, so we'll press shift A and search for a curve line and we'll plug that into the group output for now. This curve line is going to act as our base cylinder. So let's change the axes to the correct axes by making the Z value to zero and having the start at something like minus 10 on the Y axis and ending it on plus 10 on the Y axis. Then to actually convert this into a cylinder, we'll press shift A and search for a curve to mesh node. And for the profile curve, we'll add in another curve circle. Now this curve circle has to have a higher resolution to make sure that when we view it, it's nice and smooth. So let's increase the resolution from 32 all the way to something like 128. Now we need three copies of this and we can do that just by increasing the scale on everything but the Y axis and then joining them together. So let's press shift A and search for a join geometry and let's also search for a few transform geometry nodes. So the transform geometry node has this scale option that we can use to actually scale it up. So let's plug this into the geometry and this into the join geometry. However, for the scale, let's make this 1.1 and 1.1 on the X and the Z axis while keeping it at one on the Y axis. That way, this length remains the exact same, but it does increase in size on everything but the Y axis. Now to create the second version or the third version, we'll press Shift D and we'll take this mesh, plug it into the geometry, take this and plug it into the joint geometry. But this time we'll just reduce the scale instead of 1.1, we'll keep it at 0.9. And even here, we'll keep it at 0.9. So now you can clearly see we have three different concentric circles or cylinders, and we can go ahead and give them their three unique materials. So press Shift A and search for a set material node and then plug that in right here and press shift D to duplicate it and plug one in over here and one more down here. Now we need to actually select the three materials. So let's go to the material properties, press this plus button twice to create two slots and then select one slot, press this new button, select the second slot and add in a new material there as well. Now you can rename the materials. So I'll call this inner. I'll call the second one as middle and the last one as outer. Then I'll select inner on this inner ring. This one is going to get middle and finally the one that's larger is going to get the outer material. Now to actually mess around with the materials, we'll switch this from the geometry node editor to the shader editor and we'll switch our viewport shading to rendered so that we can actually see the changes. Along with that, we'll delete the light and we'll change our background color all the way to black. Once you've done that, you can go to the render properties, switch on bloom and screen space reflections, and then you can select the main geometry node object that you have and you can start playing around with the materials. Since everything is going to be lit by the inner material, I'm going to go to the material properties and first choose inner. For the inner material, I want it to be either emissive or transparent. So I'll delete the principled PSDF and I'll press shift A and search for a mix shader node. And I'm going to mix between an emission node as well as a transparent node. Now I can plug this into the first socket and this into the second socket and I'll control it using this mix shader factor. For the factor, I'll search for a Voronoi texture. And since I want this to stretch out infinitely on the Y axis, I have to make sure that the scaling is reduced to zero on the Y axis. To get that, with the Node Wrangler enabled, I'll press Ctrl T to add in a texture coordinate and mapping nodes. I'll switch from generated to object and I'll plug this color into the factor. But again, for better control, I'll press Shift A and search for a color ramp node. I'll just bring this white slider in and now you can start seeing all these different regions become black, although it's still not transparent. To make it completely transparent, we have to go down to the settings in the material property and change the blend mode to alpha clip. And now just by changing this scale on the Y axis to zero, you get these nice long streaks. Of course, if you want these streaks to have lesser thickness, you can always increase the scale and that'll increase the number of streaks. And then just by dragging this white slider in, you can get fewer number of them to be lit. If you want there to be some nice bloom or you want it to be even brighter, you can increase the strength as well. So for now, I'll go with a strength of two and I'll change this color from this white to this sort of a bluish color. For the animation, we'll actually change this rotation values and you could rotate it on the Y, but I think it'll look cooler if we rotate it about the X so that we just get this sort of a shape effect. However, we'll deal with that in the animation section. For now, let's create the other materials. And for that, we'll have to go and select middle in our material properties. For the middle, I just want there to be random blocks. So I'll do the exact same thing, except I can just use the principle to be SDF itself and press shift A and search for another Voronoi texture. Now again, I'm going to use the color as the input to the alpha socket. And again, for better control, I'm going to press shift A and search for a 
a color ramp node. This time I'm going to start bringing the black in and more and more of this region does become transparent. Again, like last time, we have to go down to the settings and change the blend mode to alpha clip. And then I'm just going to increase the scale to see what we have. Now to see everything better, I'm going to increase the metallic value all the way to one so that there's more reflections. And I'm going to reduce the roughness down to maybe 0.3. And I'm going to change the randomness down to zero. Then I can continue increasing the scale till I get something that I think suits the scene. To get more panels present, you can bring this black slider back. And if you want lesser panels to be present, you can bring it forward. So I think this sort of a distribution is good enough and I'll leave it like that. The next thing that has to be dealt with is the outer material. So let's go back up, select the outer material. And again, I'm going to leave it just as is, except I'll increase the metallic all the way to one so that it becomes a lot brighter. I'm going to reduce the base color from this bright color to the darkest black there is. Similarly, the roughness can be reduced down to maybe 0.15. And lastly, I want there to be some light streaks. To create the light streaks, I'll use a noise texture. And just like the Voronoi texture, I'll press Ctrl T, switch to object and stretch it out on the Y axis. But this time, I'm not going to stretch it out fully. Instead, I'll just stretch it down to maybe something like 0.2. And I'll simply plug this color into the emission strength. Then I have to give it some emission color. So I'll select this and make it the nice bright blue. And of course, everything is too bright. So for better control, I'm going to use a color ramp as usual. By bringing this black slider in, I can start removing those bright regions and then I can continue playing with the scale. And right now a value of 0.2 is still not stretching it long enough. So maybe let's reduce it to 0.02 and that way we get much longer streaks and I can increase the strength by pressing shift A and searching for a math node, plugging it in just before the strength and changing it from add to multiply. And once you've made it multiply, you can increase the value till it becomes super bright. Maybe I'll go with the value of 100 and I'll also increase the scale overall so that I get a larger number of streaks. You can just play around with these values till you get the streaks the exact way you want them to be. So I think something like this is good enough. So once you have that set, you can set up your camera followed by the animation. For the camera, select it and press Alt G to clear its location followed by Alt R to clear its rotation and then RX 90 to rotate it on the x-axis by 90 degrees. Then you can press zero to go into your camera view and you can reduce this focal length from 50 millimeters to something like 25 millimeters to make it a much more wide angle camera. Then under the viewport display, you can increase passport out all the way to one so that you don't see anything outside your camera view, after which you can start with the animation defaults. In your output properties, you can change your frame rate to whatever you want it to be. I'll go with 30 frames per second and the end frame I'm going to keep at 150 so that it's a five second long loop. Output folder can be wherever you want it to be and file format, I'm going to choose FFmpeg video. The encoding I'm going to change the container to MPEG-4 and the output quality I'm going to keep at Perceptually Lossless. Then I'm going to expand the timeline and press the back arrow to go to frame 0. With the camera selected, I'll press I and choose location and then on frame 150, I'll press G, Y and move it by the length of the tube. So since I know that I kept it at 10 meters on the negative Y axis and 10 meters on the positive Y axis, I have a total length of 20. So I'm going to choose 20 and then tap I, location. Now obviously this is going outside my tube, but that won't be too much of an issue. The first issue that we should fix is that this starts slow, speeds up in the middle and slows down at the end. To fix that, press T and choose linear so that you get a smooth loop. After that, select this cube and press Alt D to create a linked duplicate and press G Y 20. And then you can simply press Shift R to repeat that a couple more times so that it goes absolutely till the end. Now, when you play the animation, you should get a seamless loop, except right at the end, you might see a tiny little change as a little more of the region appears. We'll fix that in a second. But before that, let's also animate these light streaks. So in the material properties, let's change back to the inner material, press period on your numpad to centralize the nodes, and then on the x-axis rotation, tap I on frame 0. Then go to frame 150 and change it to 360 so that it's one full loop, and then again tap I. Select the actual node so that the keyframes appear, and down here press T linear, and that way you should get a smooth loop with this also changing very randomly. Once you have that set, you can start with the actual environment. So let's change from object to world, press period on your numpad to centralize the nodes and just press shift A and search for a volume scatter node. Now you can reduce the density from one down to something like 0.1 and then you can plug this into the volume. Now you want this volume to work only towards that edge away from your camera. So in your render properties, expand volumetrics and have this start value be much further so that the actual volume starts later on in the scene. Since we know that each tube is 20 meters long, we can have it start at a value of 40 so that the first two cubes are not affected by it at all. And with that, we can actually increase the density a bit more as well. And then go to frame 150 and just zoom in and see what can be seen. If you then switch back to frame zero, you shouldn't see a change. So 
So right now you can clearly see that there is a little bit more that's seen on frame zero. Let's go to frame zero and start increasing the density till that region cannot be seen anymore. Maybe a density of 0 0.5. So between frame 150 and zero, there still is a little bit of difference. So let's increase the density even more. So I think I'll just go with a value of one. So now that I have that set, you can play the animation and this is what you have. Now, if you want the end of the tunnel to be dark, this is actually good enough and that's all there is for the animation. But if you want the end of the tunnel to actually be brightly lit, you can press shift A and search for a light and choose a point light and then press G Y to just move the light back until it enters that particular volume region. So once it's there, you can actually go to the object data properties or the light properties and increase the power to something like 100. And you can also change the color to that bluish color and that way the end of your tunnel will actually be bright. Now of course if you want the point light to follow along with your camera so that it remains a seamless loop you can control click the camera in your outliner with the point selected first and then press control p and choose set parent to object. That way the point light becomes a child of the camera and as the camera moves the light will also move back and you will get a seamless loop. However I created one video like that. This video I want to have a dark end so I'm going to select the point light and delete it. So once you're happy with the way this looks go ahead and press render animation. Thank you so much for watching and I'm really glad that the video was interesting enough for you to stay till the end. If you have any questions or comments let me know down below and I'll definitely respond to as many of them as I can for as long as I can. I post videos every single day so I'm definitely sure there's content waiting for you to discover it. Until my next video comes out tomorrow, thank you so much for watching, keep creating and don't forget to stay creative.